Hello and welcome to my beginner's intro to Unity series. In this series, we'll go from adding your first sprites and setting up physics to working with C-sharp code to create a Space Invaders themed minigame. The series is targeted to absolute beginners or to those who've played around with Unity but may have been scared off by having to write your own code. In this first video, we'll take a look at how to navigate the Unity Editor workspace, how to import and set up sprites, and how to add real-world physics to your game objects. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is to open up Unity Hub and create a new project. We're going to be working in 2D, so you can load the 2D core. Name your project. Select where you'd like it to save, and then create. All right, so once your project is opened up, there's a couple of things you need to know to get started. First of all, there's four main windows in the editor. Up here in the left, we have our hierarchy. This is where you'll load any objects that you want to put into the scene you're building. So you'll notice it will automatically come with a main camera, but later on we'll add game objects like sprites, as well as things like sound effects, particle effects if you want explosions and those sorts of things. In the main menu here, we have our scene view, and this is where we're actually going to be building our game. Anything we want to put into our first level, we'll be dragging and dropping into this space, and this rectangle in the middle represents what our camera can currently see. The next window we're going to look at right now is our project window down at the bottom, and this is where we'll store any assets we want to bring into the game. Those we're going to drop here, and we'll actually start right now by doing that. So you can open up your finder, and so I've got a cityscape as well as two ships that I'll be importing to get started. You can simply drag and drop them right into your project. Now, the fourth window we're going to be looking at is our inspector window. And the inspector essentially holds all of the information about any object in our game. So, for example, if I click on one of my ships, I will now see the information about it. A couple of key things to look for here. First of all, you want to make sure your texture type is set to sprite if it isn't already. Next up, if I were to drag my ship right into my scene, you'll notice that it's very tiny. And if I zoom in, which you can do with the scroll button on your mouse, you'll notice that it is blurry and it might even be kind of discolored. Those are easy fixes. Go back down into your asset window and click on the asset you're working with, in my case, ship two. And first of all, we want to fix our pixels per unit. Now, mine was built on a 32 by 32 grid not 100, and so I'm actually just going to put 32 in there. Now the numbers don't have to be exactly right, but you want to be in the ballpark. Now when I hit apply, you'll notice that my ship gets larger and is closer to the size it should be. To fix that blurring, we're going to go down to our filter mode here. Unity automatically sets you to a bilinear filter, which is designed to smooth out rough edges. But if you're working with pixel art, we want those sharp, crisp edges, and so we'll pick no filter clicking apply, you'll see that we now have our sharp edges back. Finally, to get rid of any discoloration you might be experiencing, we can just change the format from automatic to RGBA 32-bit. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Now at this point, we have our first game object in the game. You'll notice it is over here in the hierarchy as ship number two. And if we look in our inspector, you'll notice that at the moment there are two components that have been loaded for our ship. We have the transform and sprite renderer. For the time being, we won't be needing the sprite renderer, so you can actually just minimize it by clicking the arrow there. The transform component, however, is very important. First of all, you'll notice that it keeps track of the position of our ship. Now, we could go over to our toolbar, select our Move tool, and then move the ship about using the arrows or clicking in the middle to free move it. You can also set exact positions by using your transform component. So, for example, I could change my X to 5, and it would move to 5 set it to zero, and I'll be in the center of the screen. Additionally, you can rotate your ship. I'm going to want my ships to actually be moving downward as they attack my city, and so I'm just going to set my rotation to 180 degrees on the z-axis. You can also change scale from here if you like. If you want your ships to be larger, you could scale them up, but I like mine just the way they are. I'm now I'm going to do the same thing for my second ship. All right, now that the ships are in the screen scene, we're starting to get somewhere. Let's see what happens right now if we were to play test our game. You'll notice at the moment we have a very exciting game where nothing happens at all. The reason for that is simply because at the moment these two are both just 
sprites. They're just hanging out being graphics. And if we want them to do something, we're going to have to add some components that tell them to do those things. So let's give that a try. First off, I just want to add some gravity to these ships so that they actually fall downwards when I play my game. In Unity, gravity is handled through something called a rigid body, and so I'm going to click on my ship, move over to my inspector where I can click add component, and if you start typing in rigid body, it will automatically supply what you need. We're working in 2D, so that's the one we'll use. You'll notice here that our gravity scale starts at 1. That means it's going to be using real world gravity. Uh, the ship will fall at a rate accelerating by 9.81 meters per second. You could up that scale to make it double Earth scale or lower it to get something a lot like what you'd see on Mars, but I'm just going to go with a regular gravity scale. You can also do things like change the mass of your ship or the amount of drag it experiences, but I'll just leave those for now. I'm also going to add a rigid body to my second ship. And now when I press play, you'll notice the ships plummet downward. If I wanted to slow them down a little, I could minimize the gravity scale, say cutting it in half, so that some ships fall faster or slower than others. All right, at this point, we are getting close to being set up, but I want to add my cityscape that I'm going to be defending. If I take that and drag it in, you'll notice it is very small, and it's also experiencing the blurring that my other ones were. So I'm just going to quickly set those. All right, that's about right. I'm just going to move my city into place here at the bottom. Now, the last thing we're going to do in our setup today is I just want to add a background to make this look a little more interesting. I haven't prepared a graphic for my background, but we can add a placeholder one right now. You can head over to your hierarchy where you can right click, go down to 2D object, sprites, and we're just going to add a square for now. Now the square will look unimpressive at first, but if you go to your toolbar and select your Rect tool, you'll then be able to drag the edges of this object so that it covers all of your camera. Now you may find that your square is actually covering up other objects in your scene, and in order to fix that, you can open up the sprite render, and where it says order and layer, we can just pick a lower number, like negative one, which will move it to the back. Similarly, if I picked a higher number, like two, it would move it forward. At this point, what I'm going to do now is just go to the color, and I'm going to pick a nice nighttime-y type color so that my ships are nice and visible, but it still looks kind of like nighttime. We can now press play, and we can now watch our ships plummet downward into the city. All right, we have the starting of a good game. In our next tutorial, we'll look at how to add a point system and also create some collisions so that those ships are actually hitting the city when they move into them. Thanks for watching. This is the Night Runner. If you enjoyed this tutorial or found it helpful, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel.